Want to watch an entire movie about Easter intended for adults? I love Easter. With the candy and the baskets. <sighs> yeah, Easter! For the purposes of this review, we will not be going into the unambiguously pagan roots of the holiday. This is a Christian Easter movie review, so we're going to enjoy this movie as such. Pieces of Easter is a 2013 film about a businesswoman who, with the assistance of her reclusive farmer, tries to get home in time for Easter. I was actually torn between reviewing this and another Easter film called Back Roads and Lilies. Back Roads and Lilies was a 2013 film about a businesswoman who, with the assistance of her reclusive farmer... Wait, are these the same movie? In an amazing feat of marketing desperation, they released the exact same film under two different names, not only in the same country, but to the same market. And I know what you're thinking. Pieces of Easter is supposed to appeal to the more religious audiences, while Backroads and Lilies is more mainstream. Well, plenty of Christian sites call this movie by its alternate name, so I don't see what the point was. That said, which one do you want to watch? It opens on a woman named Alza Reese whose car breaks down. Look, it's been over an hour and no one's called. Yes, well, it is Easter weekend and the tow trucks are a little backed up. I'm sorry to hear about your pipes, but it is Groundhog Day, so the plumbers are a bit overbooked. She calls her father to pick her up, but her phone dies, so she goes to find help with opening credits only slightly better than Comic Sans. It's Easter Bonnet Day. Ah, we're watching Backroads and Lilies! Okay, the DVD said pieces of Easter, but I guess it was wrong. Hi. Wait, so I just walked into a stranger's property and they aren't immediately helping me? My god, these are some backroads people. Do you think I could possibly use your phone or your cell? I don't have one. You don't have a phone or you don't have a cell? Neither. So either you're poor, stupid, friendless, or the proto-hipster. Which is it? While she's in his house charging her phone, she sees the stranger's name, Lincoln James. I have got to be in my parents' house for Easter. You have airplanes where you live? I don't fly. I know, I know. Seems unrealistic for a person in my position. Hey, stop going off script. Try to sell this crappy premise, please. Would you drive me to New Bristol? Lady, there is no way I'm driving you to New I'll Bristol. I'll pay you a thousand dollars. Plus, I'll cover all fuel, food, and hotel expenses we incur along the way. Well, that's about right. The only way to contrive this mismatched pair is to simply pay him triple what a flight would be. Oh, you don't need that. The route's real easy. We just get back on 96 East till it runs into... not going that way. And why not? Because I don't drive this truck on interstates. Are you serious? What is... That some kind of religious thing? Why does something have to be verified as a religious belief as if that gives it a pass for being stupid? Ridiculous is still ridiculous. If something is ridiculous before someone thinks a space being is going to kill them for it, it's ridiculous after they think a space being is going to kill them for it. And for the record, he never gives a reason. This is never explained in the entire movie, and yet it's ultimately why we get so many boring driving montages. One boring driving montage later, they stop off at a motel. <laughs> See, now that was pointless to show you. But there's a lot more stuff like that in this movie, so buckle up. Stephanie, it's my dad on the other line, and I gotta take it. Steph, Steph, you don't understand. The last time I talked to him, the phone went dead, so he probably thinks I'm in trouble. Daddy? Oh my gosh, it's so good to hear your voice. Listen, I'm still okay, 
but I'm going to die if you don't. Hello? Can't you just plug it in again? I could if my charger wasn't sitting on your kitchen counter right now. Whose fault is that, Alza? You looking at me like you think it's me. They hit the road, as they should always be doing. It was so life or death that you're paying me a grand to get you to your parents' house by Sunday. Oh my gosh, did you actually just open up and talk to me of your own free will? Are you like, okay, do you need me to drive or anything? And now I regret it. Thanks. After they act awkwardly in a restaurant together, Alza sees a homeless man being homeless, she smiles for some reason, but then realizes he must have made off with the chocolate she left on the back of the trunk to apparently melt under the southern sun. What about this scene makes sense? Excuse me, where did you get that? I bought it. You bought it? I found it. How did this guy end up being homeless? Did the cruel and mean streets of Schittsburg nowhere just chew him up and spit him out? He doesn't even seem to be handicapped, so yeah, this dude is just a douche. She gets another chocolate and phone charger from a store, but she lost her phone in some earlier scene they didn't care to show us, so she's still screwed. Just lost every phone number I've had for the past four years. Plus, I have to get in touch with my carrier to get the billing stopped. Of course, I... Wouldn't expect you to relate. You don't even own a cell phone. No, but seeing how much George brought you, I'm gonna rush right out and get one. So apparently, deep in the South lives the world's oldest teenager. Don't think I won't call that shit out just because your dusty ass is 55. Listen, my toes are a little cramped. Uh, pull over someplace so I can grab another pair of shoes. What, and now they've stopped for shoes? This movie is proving that it's not the destination, and it's also apparently not the journey either. Maybe I should just do the flats. Come on, pick some shoes and let's go. Ow! <gasps> I can't believe I just did that! Oh, I think I have a first aid kit in my bag! Here, let me get the door for you! Lyndon? We got divorced a year ago. You don't say. My god, can this chick go one minute without talking about herself? Have you ever tried it? Tried what? You know, being more talkative. Ask me something about myself. Trust me, by now I think I know you better than you know yourself. They pull up at a store and Alza sees some robbers wearing those panty masks that make their faces look like 2004 Grand Theft Auto characters. And in this universe, apparently no one has rearview mirror technology as evident by Alza being able to pull off this sneak attack. Lincoln! What? I just wanted to do something to be a part of things this year. Why is that? so I can show everyone that I'm not a total screw-up. I thought we went over this. Well, excuse me for not taking better notes. All this whining. Whining? Whining about your divorce, whining about your car, whining about your chocolate rabbits and your colored eggs. You made your point. Not to mention your cell phone and a number of croutons in your salad. I said you made your point. You've got real priority problems, sweetie. It has been no great picnic being stuck in this cramped up little truck with you either for three days. You think I had nothing better to do than blow three days driving some spoiled princess halfway across the country? You think I had nothing better to do with a thousand dollars than to give it to you so you could get your stupid tractor fixed? Yep, you both had no reason to do this. It was a stupid idea, wasn't it? So like any big fight, they make up pretty quick. Remember, this is an Easter movie, and do something related to that. Mmm, watch that Easter egg creation. Isn't it as magical as all those Christmas classics? When I first left home, I... I couldn't wait to be independent make lots of money and have my own lifestyle, do what I wanted, marry who I wanted. You do realize none of those things are bad though, right, Alza? As someone who grew up in a cult, namely the Jehovah's Witnesses, all of those things were routinely demonized. You're trained not to trust yourself at all. 
but rather to rely on the governing body, also known as the society. Seven men who live in a building in New York, it may have moved since I left, who basically tell every witness what to think and do. They may want to put it in more flowery language, but that really is what they do. And if you don't agree with them or whatever the hell, then you're out and you can't have contact with any member of your family who is currently a witness until you, I don't know, say that you were horribly wrong and you're ready to follow the body again and all of their instructions and you come back and it takes like a year of sitting in the back room and not being able to talk to anybody and then after you crush your humility into a tiny little ball, just destroying whatever personhood you have left to come and worship this cult, um, then they gotcha, and you're back, and you're a shell of a person, and that's happened to people I've known, and they're gone. They're gone forever. And that's really... <laughs> and that's what religion can do to people. It's what... not all religion, but that's what it, it can do to people. And I've seen it firsthand. And... <laughs> It's not always about blowing up things and, you know, killing people. There's lots of ways religion can fuck up people's lives and hurt them. Lots of ways. And, not, and this isn't even political. Like, it's not even. That's a whole other level. Um, but, yeah, I just thought I'd take a time out to go into that. Because when I heard Alice's statement there, it's the only thing in the entire movie that just set off alarm bells for me. I'm not saying Alza is a witness because witnesses don't celebrate these holidays. Um, they, they're they all about history and the selective ways, so they know that Easter's pagan and Christmas doesn't really matter and this and that. So the fact that she's celebrating Easter, she's not clearly a witness. She's like random church person. So yeah, but I just, I had to take a time out for that because that statement she said, imagine growing up with that as negative, drilled into your head. All of those things are bad. <laughs> if you want them, you're bad. If you want them, you're flawed. If you want them, you're weak and Satan's twisting you. And they're all gateways. They're all deceptive. They're all, you know, you can't trust yourself or your intelligence or your common sense. It's, and they do this to everybody, to children. You baptize, <laughs> I, I can't go into all of it. But yeah, that's, that's, that's stuff for another day. <sighs> so what were you saying, Elsa? Have my own lifestyle, do what I wanted, marry who I wanted. I know the most excellent therapist, Alza. Here's her number. They go to an Easter service at a church because they feel they haven't wasted enough time getting to her parents' home, and this shot is framed very badly for some reason. is everybody it's Easter exactly we get our obligatory sermon about the true origins of the holiday that's in every religious holiday movie and is especially laughable in an Easter movie she's here you take a personal check you cover the gas and everything else how about we call it even I want you to stay and share Easter with me and my family. I don't even have a clean. Mr. James, this is not negotiable. Ah, <sighs> will they? Won't they? Apparently, no one cared. This movie was god meh. It wasn't the worst movie I've seen, and I was actually able to get through it all in one sitting. There's a few tiny little laughs that's decently made and doesn't feature any earth-shakingly horrible messages save for the demonization of normal and good human desires. But virtually every religion asserts that in one way or another, from sexuality to self-centerization and even wanting things in general. The acting was alright, except for one confusing scene we couldn't tell was comedy crying or sad crying. Either way, we weren't moved and we didn't laugh, so I guess it fails on either count. Ally Ross, and as always, have a good one. Support the show on Patreon to see reviews a week before anywhere else, and other benefits. I'd really appreciate it, thanks. After they act awkwardly in the restaurant together, Alza sees a homeless man being homeless. She smiles for some reason, but then realizes... <laughs> That's 
so adorable. I love seeing homeless people shoving shit in their mouths. I really do. Oh wait, that shit is my chocolate. Oh no!